In this video, you'll learn how to build your womb now. It'll be quick and easy, I promise. I'm Raphael from Womb, and I'll go through it all with you. Let's make a start. Open the box and take out the saddle first. Then, take out this box, plus the packaging and front wheel. Be careful not to scratch your bike with the front wheel hub. Put a section of cardboard on the floor so that you can rest the fork ends once you've lifted your bike out. Lift it out with one hand on the top tube and one on the rear wheel. Now it's time to take out and open this little box. Your pedals are in sight. Let's put them to one side for now. There's an important locking bolt for your stem inside this envelope, which we'll need later. And here's the instruction manual for your bike. Give it a good read and look after it. This is the bolt-on skewer for your front wheel. And these are the tools you'll need to build your bike. A pedal spanner and two hex keys. The first step is to carefully remove the packaging around the bars in the frame. At this point, we recommend keeping all of the original packaging, just in case you need to return your bike or exchange it for a different size. Now we can start building. Twist the fork so that the light points forward. That's the direction you'll be riding. Place the handlebar and stem onto the steerer tube as far as it will go. Once it's in place, Check that the brake and gear cables form consistent curves. You don't want them to be kinked or twisted, like on the left. Now, take out the locking bolt from the envelope that you set aside and screw it into the top of the stem. You can tighten it by hand to begin with. Inside the manual, you'll find a list of all the recommended tightening torques for all the fixtures on your bike. Having a torque wrench for things like this is really helpful. In fact, every good toolbox needs one. Let's straighten the bars now. Make sure that this line matches up between the stem and the headset cap. Progressively tighten the two bolts on the stem's clamp, alternating until you reach the right torque. To end this part, we'll finish tightening the locking bolt to the correct torque. Now we're ready for the front wheel. There's a transport lock in the brake calipers. Let's remove this. At this point, do not squeeze the front brake lever, as this will push the brake pads together, and these are very hard to separate again. Look where your disc brake rotor is. It needs to be on the left if you're looking forward the non-drive side of your bike. Remember, carefully slot the wheel into position. Ensure that the disc brake rotor is slotted squarely in the caliper between the brake pads. Make sure the electrical connection on the hub dynamo is pointing upwards and then connect the two pin connector for the lights. Thread any excess cable carefully back into the fork once connected so that there's no risk of getting it caught in spokes while riding. Now we need the bolt-on skewer. Unscrew the axle nut and take the spring off the skewer. Thread it from left to right through the hub. That's the non-drive side to the drive side. Now pop the spring and axle nut back on the skewer on the drive side and tighten it firmly by hand. Using the correct sized hex key, we'll tighten the skewer on the other side to the recommended tightening torque. Now. Turn the lights on using the switch found on the back of the front light. Lift the front wheel off the ground and give it a spin. Both the front and back lights should function and shine brightly. Now's a good time to stand the bike up using its kickstand. Right, you really need somewhere to sit. Loosen the seat post clamp a little bit, then install the seat post with the saddle attached at the correct height. Point the saddle forwards and align it with the top tube. 
then tighten the clamp to the recommended torque. Let's move on to the front rack. Loosen the four rack fastening bolts on the head tube, but make sure you don't remove them entirely. Hang the rack using these four hooks onto the bolts you've just loosened. All four bolts need re-tightening to the recommended torque now. Start with the top one on one side, then the one below it, then repeat for the other side, going from top to bottom. Before tightening too much, double check that the washers are on the outside of the hooks and that there's no interference with any cables. Give the handlebars a quick check to see if anything's in the way. Now onto your pedals. Take the pedal marked R for right and screw it in a clockwise direction into the drive side crank. Use the spanner to tighten it to the correct torque. The non-drive side pedal, marked L, needs to be installed in an anti-clockwise direction and tightened to the correct torque. The last thing to do is check the tyre pressure. Too little air in your tyres? Use a pump for Schrader valves and pump them up to the recommended pressure. It's hard to give a precise tyre pressure as it depends on the total weight. When sat on the bike, you want the tyre to compress by about 15% as this will ensure good grip and optimal shock absorption. The permissible pressure range is indicated on the tyre sidewalls and you really want to stay within the upper and lower limit. On the box that your bike was delivered in, there are templates for your frame bag. Use a cutting knife to cut them out and then use the straps to hold it in place. You can get creative and fashion all sorts of cool things to go in there. Remember, disc brakes take a while to get bedded in and reach their optimal braking performance. Do some practice laps before going on a proper ride and brake forcefully a few times to bring the bike to a stop. After a few pulls, you'll realize that they're already braking more effectively. And now, go and have a great time with your womb now.